What's up YouTube, Mr. Lama C here, and today we're going to be talking through an Enchantress guide. Um, I'll be talking through kind of the solo piece of it, and as well uh, a party, which is where it generally I think performs better overall. Um, then we'll talk through the gear, the stats, the skills, the mercenary, all of those pieces of this character um, for your playing pleasure. So, to start out, let's go ahead and look at the sorceress right here. You can see that her stats, you can see her life and mana gain per character and stat level. Um, and they're going to be not that great for life. So, she's going to be a little bit weak overall. That's definitely something you want to be careful with. And get her a little bit more life overall through gear and whatever ways that you can. Additionally, down the bottom right, um, you can find her frames. And this is going to be useful for her breakpoints. For FHR, FCR, FBR, if you need more information on those, I'll have a link down below in the description for you. But when you're building your characters, you want to definitely keep these in mind um, as they will be important. Also, IS frames, but those change based on your weapons, and you need a calculator to deal with all of that um, if you are going to run Passion with this character. So removing this, uh, we can actually check out the skill build. You'll note that there's still a lot of points that are left over after this, and that's simply because it's not a very high intensive uh, skill build character. You're maxing out Enchant, you're maxing out Warmth, you're maxing out Fire Mastery, getting your 1-1-1-1, one, 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 and you did it. Hey, you, you maxed everything out for this character, so uh, congratulations. At that point, you can kind of spend your other points where you want them if you want to go into some sort of dual spec like Frozen Orb mixed with Enchant or do something else. I mean, that's definitely like a viable way to run this character. Just go like this, and now you have a Frozen Orb Enchantress, and you can kind of run this dual spec, right? Help me. Simple as that. Gives you a few different options, though. Um, so overall... That's going to be kind of the skill build. How do we get to that? Uh, I mean, really, like I say, you're probably going to want to use like lightning or fire, like fireball and fire bolts and all that stuff for leveling up because enchant's not even till level 18. And beyond that, I mean, there's not really a lot of other stuff. So I would probably level up using just like fire, just going up with fire bolt until I get to level 12 where I go into fireball. And then at level 18, I would probably respec or later even, right? Because this is definitely like more of an end game build. Um, later even, I would respec out of all of this and just get one, 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 one there and um, place my points into enchant as I can and all my extra points into warmth to increase the damage of enchant. Now, a big boost from enchant uh, is something that you'll note. It really does add good damage, but one of the bigger benefits and what I really love about Enchant is that it also adds a ton of attack rating. So you can see this has 425% attack rating bonus. Um, and that's not just for you. You can cast that on your mercenary. You can cast that on any party members. So they're getting the added damage and the added attack bonus. And it's just going to be super, super nice for the character overall. Um, so really something that you, you definitely want to look at uh, to just get for helping out your team. Like I say, it's a fun party play if you have a lot of melee characters or characters that are, you know, even bow Amazons and things like that. Um, beyond that, let's talk a little bit about the stats. For stats, you want to have enough strength for gear. You're probably going to have 156 for your spirit. Uh, enough dexterity for gear, which is honestly, you shouldn't have to really put any points in and everything else into vitality. I don't even think you need to really put any points in energy for this character, even while leveling. If you do feel like you want a few there, you can have them and then you can respec out of them later, but you're going to be a melee character. So you're not really using mana. Um, pretty much everything is just going to go into vitality after that. So once again, enough strength for gear, enough dexter dexterity for gear everything else into vitality right here um, and that's kind of a nice benefit boost for the character uh, overall when we start looking at gear uh, you just want to get as many plus to skills as you can because you're really just trying to boost it up so this is just going to be like the high enchant damage build mage fist um, here's a three three so this gives you plus six on enchant uh, of course you have this so you also get the plus one skills from you know, using your CTA on your offhand, but you can put fire facets in this, you can put fire facets in this, um, plus three fire skills amulet, you could also get a J mod if you wanted for even more of the fire damage, 
Uh, the 20% more, I wonder if that's worth more than spirit. Maybe, maybe not. Um, and enchant Ormus uh, is going to be good with the additional fire skill damage. SOJ, BK Ring, Arachnid Mesh. Um, and then I've got some treks on, but really just as many plus the skills as you can get. So that way your enchant, you can see our enchant is level 46. And I don't even have all the fire uh, GCs in this character yet to boost it up even more. I do have a Source Torch and uh, an Annie though. And then you get your plus to life and res, all the small charms that you can fit under there just to kind of boost the character up a little bit more. Um, so yeah, you can really get, once again, we're missing one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight more skills. So we have it at plus 54. And then once we use battle orders and battle command or battle command, I should say, we can have a level 55 enchant right now on this character, which is just kind of bonkers overall. Um, so really a lot of fun. Uh, you can, you can do a lot with it right there. And this just gives you a massive amount of damage and you can boost up your mercenary and even do even more damage. And if you want even more damage, let's say that you're going to, after you boost it, you're going to use something like a passion to go around and hit things. Maybe you pop on this Phoenix, you get the redemption aura. You also get the minus to enemy fire resist. Um, it gives you even more right there. And now you just kind of walk around and you're a little zealot, right? Like it's kind of amazing, but you can just be, you can just be a zealot and have a ton of fun. And really, I mean, you can kill a lot of stuff. So, like I say, there's there's kind of a couple of ways to uh, to play this build. Whether it's just enchanting people for you, uh, or you know, just enchanting party members, enchanting yourself, whatever it is. But this character can get extremely strong and really start to murder a lot of stuff. Yes, you can make this character go take on Ubers. A lot of people do that with the bear source, which we'll be doing another guide for. Um, but she can do so much damage. You could also run the dual dream, but once again, that goes into the bear build. We can talk about that later. Um, if you are running some sort of dual spec, right? You want to run the enchant and then also maybe you're running the frozen orb. You could swap in, you know, some basics like COH. You could put on, you know, the Hodo or even just having the passion with that. Um, but having the COH for more survivability and, and all of that can be good for the added damage. Um, you can put Shaco on. You can, you know, kind of trade out a couple things right there just to make yourself a little bit more of this, like, overall fighter. Not exactly a max out um, character that's just going for high crazy enchant skill. Still can have a very high skill in the, in the mid 40s and you can pre-buff as well. But uh, this is, you know, a great way to just play a character that really is just a lot of fun to run around and slap a bunch of dudes in the face, you know, with a big old stick. How more can you really want? Um, budget build for, for this character, it's definitely, you're still going to want at least to make that passion if you're, like, actually leveling up with it. Really, everything is as many plus to skills as you can get. Spirit Sword is great. A Leaf Rune Word is great. Hexfire has some higher requirements, but it's not bad. Um, you know, you can get stuff like that. You could run like Cuckoo Shikaku or Demon Machine. Uh, let me go to my bows. Uh, so you can get some like fun here with the exploding arrows and everything like that to have a little bit of fun. Um, that can be like a fun thing to do for this character. Uh, in terms of you know, armors, stealth, sure, for just, like, starting out. You'll eventually want some plus to skills, right? Because, once again, that's kind of the main focus. Getting some sort of cannot be frozen can also be really helpful if you're going to run around and smack a bunch of dudes. Whether that's a raven frost ring, or you get it on a spirit shroud, or a durial shell, whatever. Um, that's all kind of up to you right there. Uh, Twitch throw would also be nice, just for the big ol' IIS, so that could be helpful, too. Um, in terms of belts, I mean, lots of things you could put on. You could put on a Dungos. You could put on a String of Ears. A Gold Wrap would be nice. A Night Smoke would be nice. I mean, once again, it kind of depends what you're going for. But worst case, even just a big old life belt, that's super easy right there. If you are trying to hit more things, 
Getting higher attack rating is helpful. Getting Angelics is helpful. Eventually, your Enchant's going to have such a big attack rating boost uh, that you should be okay. But if you stack your attack rating with, like, this right here, I mean, you can see my attack rating is really high and really nice for this character. So you can, you can definitely boost that up with very minimal effort. I mean, that's pretty much only coming from that and, like, not much other attack rating at all. Um, so that's a nice way to do it. Plus the skills things like, um, you know, like Seraph's Him is nice. This also gives you more attack rating and damage to demons and undead, which is helpful for if you're like passion, uh, using zeal. I have Etlich for plus to skills, but even just, you know, like we have, uh, or that other amulet we had, which is just plus three to fire skills, right? You just want to kind of get the skills. That's all we want. More and more skills. Um, Ancient's Pledge is a fantastic shield. Rhyme for easy cannot be frozen if you are going to go into the melee. Uh, Moser's is nice. Saigon's even just get plus to skills. Uh, Sanctuary for a lot of resistances if you do want to run around. Um, helmets wise, there's some good like little plus skills helms if you can't find a nice circlet. Just like a lore, a peasant crown, Sazavis. Tarnhelm, those are nice. If you want some more res, you can stack res. You can find like a rock stopper. That's a great little helm to put on. All sorts of good little options there. And then for gloves, Blood Fist and Sanders and other IAS gloves will actually be kind of helpful for this character. I mean, I like Mage Fist, but if you really want to start smacking dudes and this can get you another frame or two up, it can really be worth it to put on some nice um, faster run walk, or I mean, uh, IAS uh, gloves right there. For boots, lots of great boots. You're really looking for life um, and resistances and faster run walk. So a lot of these that you see here, Alders and Natalia's, Shopped Ones, Inferno Strides, Water Walks, Trex, Hisaris, even something like Sanders Boots. I mean, there's a lot of boots that just have some nice things for them. And they're just going to really help this character overall. Um, so that's all you need for, for this character. For the Mercenary, I like running an Act 2 Mercenary. Um, you can either run an Act 2 Might or Holy Freeze. That's offensive or defensive one, depending on your preference. Um, I kind of like Holy Freeze, I feel like, for this character. But if I'm going to go around smacking dudes, eh, Might or is not terrible to get, right? Get a little more physical damage. Uh, but most of my damage is going to be that fire damage. So, you know, it's whatever. Um, Infinity, though, is very nice just to even lower the res even more. So your fire damage hits even harder. And same for your party. Fortitude is great, and Andariel's is, uh, this is kind of your, like, best setup. If you can get an Eth Andes, even better. Other options, Treachery is great, Smoke is great, Shaft Stop is great. Um, there's other armors as well that do well, Gladiator's Bane and stuff that are decent armors for sure. Helmets, you just want some, like, big lifesteal to really help your mercenary. So, lifesteal right here, uh, and some big life. Lifesteal and life, lifesteal and damage reduction, you know, things like that. Treachery would also be really nice on our character to run around and smack a bunch of dudes. We get the Venom. We get the Fade. Um, actually, does the Venom overwrite? Ooh, that's actually a good question. I wonder if the Venom overwrites or not. I don't actually know that. So maybe that's something somebody in the comments can post uh, if that'll overwrite the enchant. It doesn't? Okay, perfect. My chat is saying it does not overwrite it. Because there are certain things that will overwrite other things and whatever. Um, so you just get both. You get poison and fire, which is great. Even more damage. Um, and then for for weapons, uh, obedience can be super nice. Uh, Reaper's Toll. Insight can be great for your mercenary. Um, Tomb Reaver. All sorts of other things like this. Bone Hue. I mean, there's a lot of nice big damage weapons to just give to your mercenary. The one thing about obedience is it will overwrite your enchant. So that can be bad. Um, so this is the only thing. I'd maybe look at like honor or something instead. Because you're going to have a very high enchant. And you don't want your mercenary really losing some of your damage uh, because of this. So anyways. Um, that right there kind of covers this character. Like I say, she's actually a decent character and a lot of fun she is a little bit expensive and can take a little bit of time to kind of get going and everything uh so i don't think it's a great starter build exactly but if you're playing with a party i actually think it boosts her up way more in this in the party class especially if your party has a lot of melee or like i said bosons or anything but anybody that's attacking um like that because you get to enchant all of them and it can actually add a lot there so, kind of depends what the party looks like, um, but 
yeah, overall, really fun build. Hope that you enjoyed this. Hope that you have fun making an enchantress. And uh, I will see you guys next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Peace, YouTube.